Upon delivery, ChemGuess already provides access to more than 25,000 raw materials for immediate access. This includes all raw materials that have an official GHS classification published worldwide, as well as a wide range of other substances often used in the chemical industry. Since there are already more than a quarter of a billion CAS numbers, it may happen that a raw material used by your company is not yet available in ChemGuess. In this case, ChemGuess automatically initiates an online search. In contrast to most other programs, however, we do not limit our search to a single database, but we perform an extensive internet search, sometimes reading hundreds of web pages that can be accessed free of charge. Even though we already achieve excellent results, the extension of this functionality is already in progress. Accordingly, you can expect a gradual improvement of results over time. For confidentiality reasons, we do not disclose the sources. If you enter a CAS number and the substance does not yet exist in ChemGuess, this web search will be invoked automatically. Press F10 to apply the preselected data. Details are explained later in this video. However, additional information can also be added at any time to substances already available in ChemGuess. To do this, press F2 or click on the button name Web Research. Since there are usually several different results, you can decide by yourself which data you want to transfer. For this purpose, the program provides a simple color coding. If a value is marked in blue, it means that this value is already stored with the substance. A yellow marking means that a value should be transferred. If there is already a blue marking, the value remains unchanged, unless you mark another value manually. Values that do not exist yet for the substance are automatically highlighted in yellow. Up to 15 descriptions per language are marked already. If you click on a language, you can deactivate or reactivate individual descriptions at any time. If you click in the physical chemical data in a white field, it will be highlighted in yellow and will then replace the value highlighted in blue during the transfer. In this example, you can see that our web search found 40 different classifications for this substance. For some common substances, this number even increases to over 100. In the first line the program shows which classification will be output for your own country. Then, if available, all existing official classifications will be displayed. And only then all other classifications are shown. If you are not too familiar with country flags, you just have to hover the mouse over a flag to see which country it stands for. Hovering the mouse over a classification, you can immediately see the text of each H phrase. On the right side you can see the number of notifications for a classification. If there is also the word joint there, it means that it was a joint notification. Please note that these numbers do not necessarily correspond to the data on the ECHO website, since we obtain these classifications from various sources, and also other countries or organizations require notifications like ECHA. In this case, we add up the number of notifications. If there is already an active classification, you will see that in the other classifications some classification components are displayed in green. These are those that also occur in the active classification and the marking is used to indicate where one can find similarities. If you now mark and transfer a classification, this means that it is taken as the basis for the classification of substances if no official classification is available for the country in question. In addition, this classification is then extended by classifications resulting from physical data such as flash point and pH value. To make this more clear, we will show you in this context how you by yourself can set which classifications are taken from other classification regions and when. To do this, go to Maintenance Programs, Program Adjustments, and from there to the priorities of official substance classifications. In this screen all countries will be displayed for which there are official classifications, supplemented by the data from web research. Now, for substances for which there is no official classification in the desired country, you can specify which classification should be adopted. It is not necessary to define when data from the web research should be taken over. You can make this definition, but if not, 
the data from web research will be automatically taken over as the last option. As you can see in this example, we have now set that if a raw material for the desired country has no official or locked classification, it is first checked whether there is a classification of the EU, if there is none, the classification of Korea is taken. If there is also no official classification for Korea, the classification of the web research is taken if available, and if no web research has been performed yet, the classification of Taiwan is taken. However, the classifications will not get combined. If the official classification of a country was adopted, the following countries are ignored. It is up to you to decide on how you want to arrange the classification regions. There are no official rules to follow there. Just always remember that if there are official classifications somewhere and you have adopted them, then in case of an audit it can be argued that these classifications have been controlled by governmental organizations and thus should be of good quality. Unfortunately, there is no official right or wrong for that, but it is left to the user's understanding and experience how to set this type of transfer. As a final option, which basically cannot be influenced, the classification is supplemented by classifications from physical data. One particular option that affects the classification is the selection of affected organs or routes of exposure. These are therefore generally adopted. However, this does not mean that if an organ or a route of exposure is selected, the corresponding H phrase is automatically selected as well, but vice versa. If one of the H phrases H370 to H373 is included in the raw material, then the previously calculated H phrase is supplemented by the corresponding information, otherwise this information will be ignored. The next option concerns the toxicological data. The problem here is that users create the majority of toxicological test types by themselves and we therefore cannot know how they were created. As far as we could determine them, the allocations were of course made automatically. In all other cases you have to make the allocations, fortunately only once, by yourself. If you want to enter allocations, simply click the button Maintenance of Allocations. This will give you an overview of all toxicological values for this one particular substance and for which an allocation has not yet been made. Click in the field ChemGuess allocation and you will get a list of all toxicological test types available in ChemGuess. Select the correct allocation and repeat this process until all the toxicological data you want to show in the safety data sheet has been allocated. In order to be able to transfer different similar values obtained from the internet into a single field of the ChemGuess database, we have also added the option to enter conversion factors. This usually concerns the same test types with different durations. We are aware that this is not entirely uncomplicated, which is why we have created an additional option in the maintenance programs to be able to assign this from different perspectives. To do this, go to Maintenance Programs, Program Adjustments, and there to Allocation WebTox data to ChemGuess test types. In the first menu option, the program displays an overview of all toxicological types found on the web. Select a type and you will be taken to a submenu in which all test types for this type are displayed. There you can perform the allocation to ChemGuess test types as shown before. In the second menu item you get a coarser grouping of toxicity types. Again, there is a submenu where all test types will be shown. Lastly, there is the selection in which all test types in ChemGuess will be shown. From there you come to the same selection as in the first menu option, and there you can make the necessary allocations. If you have transferred data this will be shown in the main screen of the raw materials through different symbols. Just hover the mouse over the button for web research and you will not only get the icons explained, but you will also see the default classification from the web research and the date when the data was transferred. When you click on the video icon, the video you are watching right now will be started. Additionally, the classification will be displayed when you click in the field GHS classification.